The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. The first thing we want to take a look at today, like we usually do, is the German DAX. And as you can see, we went up and we took out those highs at the 78% level. What we've done now is we've made a parallel channel move very similar to what we had during the month of July to August. So um, that's backing off very, very slightly. You know, not too much is happening. The big thing that's happening today uh, in the in the international market is the the UK gilt, which is their bond. Uh, they are, you know, really going wacko uh, to the upside. In other words, uh, interest rates, uh, you know, going a lot lower over there. In order, they're trying to, you know, to bring money in. I don't know how that works, but it doesn't make any sense to me. But some of this doesn't doesn't anyway so that's that's what you have to look at the british pound is still under some attack well we're back down to that uh, 120 level there should be some really uh one uh, yeah the 120 level we should be very very close uh, you know to a pretty good bottom here in the british pound uh the good thing is we are having huge swings oh we got a caller today very good david from clearwater david how are you i'm doing good larry how are you today very good thank you I was uh, wondering if I could get you to take a look at the uh, euro U.S. dollar cross pair. You bet you. You will start out looking at it on the weekly basis, okay? Sure. All right. The first one is we're going to look at here uh, for David is the. Um, I'll put it, get it up here. You could look at it. You'll see that we have a uh, really strong uh, place to uh, have a butter a Gartley pattern at the uh, par level, right? Just about 99. In the year. Right now, we're trading at roughly 110, so we're only 10 handles away. If we look at this chart on a really long-term basis and think about it a little bit, we made a bottom uh, down in early 2015 at that 105 level. We rallied all the way up to 117. That's when we made an ABCD, and we have been going sideways for a year and a half. Uh, this is either a great distribution or a uh, Tremendous accumulation. I have to think we're heading lower. Uh, if we get below uh, 109, which we're not very far, uh, you know, from that level right now, then we could start to see an acceleration to the downside. But I still think we're heading towards 99 in the euro. Okay, because um, I was looking at it on a shorter-term basis on the daily, and it looked like it was setting up a um, we, a uh, buy Gartley there on we, we the. Can, um, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, so I, I can do the short term also. In fact, I'll do that for you right now. We'll just look at the daily, and you'll see uh, we had some really nice symmetry here on Friday. We had a pretty good rally. We should have been stronger on Sunday, but with the fact that the market went below that level, said that we were probably getting ready you know, to uh, go down a lot lower. We should have some pretty good support at the uh, 110 uh, level. That's very, very close to that 110 level. Uh, but as you can see if we get below that old low back in June, the Brexit low at 108.60, that really sets up some really serious moves to the downside, in my opinion. Yeah, no, without a, yeah, that's uh, that is definitely a key support low. It looks like so. Okay, so I think what I'm hearing, just want to repeat it back. Looks like we got a potential for a pretty decent tradable bounce, probably setting up the next move down in all likelihood unless we get a wide bar on the daily that kind of indicated a change in uh, overall direction trend. Yes, that's what I that's what I would think. So far, we're having some really good volatility over there. I mean, the pound's jumping around 300 points every hour. <laughs> so that's, that's an unusual situation in itself. That's usually how bottoms and tops are made, you know, with huge volatilities, people trying to position themselves. Uh, so you're right. You have to be careful of these really long-ranging bars because if you stand in front of one of those, you can get run 
over by a freight train. You don't want to do that. But 110 should be really good support uh, in the euro. That's going to be a 78% retracement of the June low. It'll also be a 1.618 expansion of the August September rally that uh, you know we had from 111, you know, up to 113. That's what it looks like to me. Gotcha. I'm I'm seeing the same thing. I appreciate you putting up the uh, the weekly. I was pretty much looking at it from a uh, from a daily standpoint. I'm mean, trying to branch out into trading other things besides the uh, the S P and natural gas. Do you mind if I ask you just a, a general trading question, please? Well, of course. Yeah, go right ahead. So let me ask you something. When you, when you're looking at something else to trade, um, typically in the, you know the strategy that I've been doing is is the one I picked up from reading Mark Douglas's book, where you know you trade a multiple contract. And uh, you have, uh, you know, a relative short-term um, uh, profit objective, and then for your first contract, and then for your second contract, you typically have a longer-term um, profit objective. Um, my question for you is: is when you're looking at, you know, anything, whatever, corn, wheat, pick something. What is your methodology or your strategy? for determining what the first profit objective should be? Is it, is it always like a 618 of a previous movement, retracement of a previous swing point, or a 786, or is there just like a no. percent value use? Or? It's, a, it's a dollar amount of the amount that I'm risking. If I'm risking $400 and I have multiple contracts on, as soon as I make one unit has made the, uh, the first objective, I take that, I take that profit. I, I leave my stop in. Uh, on the others for a while. In other words, it could go back down and stop the rest of them out. But as it as it starts to go up, I start to take them off one at a time. The only times that I that I don't do something like that is when I have a really, 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 I mean, really strong feeling that something big is going to happen, and then I'll just uh, move my stop to break even and let it rip. Much like you know we're looking at here uh, in the S and P and the Dow and the NASDAQ that, that we think we're looking at this big low coming in here. Uh, most probably on Monday, we have this super full moon coming in uh, on uh, Sunday. So this is going to be a very, and we have all these astro things coming in uh, on, on Friday the 14th. So this is going to be a really, really big time, you know, to, uh, to try to, you know, hit a home run, so to speak. And so since you have a little bit of a lead in it, you know, you really uh, you hate to see any of your profits dissipate, but you can lower your stop down a little bit so you do protect yourself. One thing that Mark Douglas taught me, and he wrote his book, uh, Trading in the Zone, here in the office, is that uh, this is a business of making money. It's not a business of being right or wrong. And you have to, and one of the, the main things the trader has to do is he has to, you know, reward himself when he's right. And, you know, uh, you're not going to be right all the time. You know, 60% in this business is pretty good. You know, if you had 60% in baseball, they have statues put on every baseball stadium <laughs> in the world. But uh, that's not the way you it is in trade. Breath, if you could pull that off. Yeah, that's for okay, sure. Okay, so if I heard you correctly, and please forgive me for just repeating this. This is just kind of how I make sure I understood you correctly. Um, your first prop objective is equal to the amount of uh, – dollar value or pips or uh, movement that equals your risk. So if you're risking 40 pips, your first profit objective yeah, is 40 David, pips. David, let's take yes, a break here. We'll come back and we'll cover this again, okay? Because I think it's an important spot. Thank you, Larry. You bet. <laughs> TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS 
has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with David out of Clearwater, Florida. David, we were talking about, uh, you know, how you set up your profit objectives. That That's a it's pretty flexible for for everyone i think but for what i do i found that you know taking profits at my first unit uh getting me to a break even trade as nearly as possible is the best thing to do that usually amounts to around 40 pips in the currencies or let's say 400 dollars in corn or I mean, just recently we had a, a trade in corn that uh we just held on because it it exploded uh, out out of the out of the C point. That's another thing that you have to take in consideration. If you buy something at one of these numbers that you know they work some of the time, and they it, it explodes out of there, it's giving you a giant telegraphic message saying stay long, stupid, because it's going higher. And all you have to do then is just you know keep using a trailing stop until you get to your second or even third objective. But you know, those don't happen like that, uh, you know, all the time. So use the, as it comes off the C point, if it, if the market, if you buy something and it starts working right away, uh, the market's telling you that you're right. And if you buy something on, on the other side of it and it's not working, uh, you can t actually tighten your stop up because uh, that's another thing that's important with pattern recognition. Because when the patterns fail, they fail. We, we just had one recently in the British pound that, uh, that didn't work. So those are the things that uh, I think are relatively important in selecting profit objectives. Okay, so I think what I'm hearing you say is that, like, because I know you've said, at least in you know previous uh, programs as well as conversations, you're going to have like you typically risk 40 pips in the currency. So if you're running, let's say, multiple layers on forex, where you're you know running whatever, let's say multiples of 20,000, let's say you're buying 60,000 um, set. 20 at your first profit objective, which would be 40 pips, uh, and you know, and of movement in the right direction. So that kind of takes a the, the cost associated with the failures, pattern failures of other trades, reduces that, and helps to protect your capital. 
um, as a, as a strategy. And then, and assuming we don't have like a massive wide bar, which would, which to your point a second ago, which would telegraph, hey, this thing is is breaking out in a big way. In which case, then the proper strategy would be a trailing stop. You just basically set the objective at, at, at an additional multiples or six one eight or seven eight six retracements of previous swing points. Am, am I am I hearing that correctly? Absolutely, that's exactly correct. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, that's a great book, by the way. Uh, I, you've recommended. I bought it a while ago, based on your recommendation, and um, I, I pull it out and reread it. It's amazing. I don't know about you. you know, I only speak of myself, but I've, I've read it like three or four times. And each time I read it, I kind of gain something I didn't get the first time, which is kind of wild. I'll tell you what I would suggest, and this is what I tell everyone that that has read the book. You don't read that book. Uh, you read it through first time, and then you set it on your desk, and you read two pages a day. And it acts as like an anchoring mechanism and uh, to tell you that you really don't know what the heck you're doing when you're trading. You just have a trading plan that may or may not work and that you have to protect yourself at all times. So when you're reading that two pages of the book, at the end of the year, you've read that book two and a half times, and then it starts to seek in. And so I use it as an anchor, you know, to really try to, you know, realize that where I'm at. My problem is that every time I look at the book, I think of Mark, which I think of him all the time anyway, but I had so many good times together. But it, it acts as a really great anchoring device, and he was really big into neuro-linguistic programming, which, you know, is some of the things that Tony Robbins worked on. And so it, it, all, uh, it all helps a little bit because this is a mental game. No matter what you're, uh, what you're thinking about this business, it is really more mental than anything you might mean. That's why those people that have an automatic system, uh, you know, they really take the mental um, hodgepodge out of it, and that gives them a tremendous advantage. So that's what I would suggest. Read a couple pages every day. Just like you were reading the uh, the Lord's Prayer or the Constitution, whatever you wanted to read, uh, that's what it acts like. It acts like an anchor. It makes you think that what you're doing in trading is really related to how well you plan. Yep, I agree completely. Well, listen, Larry, as, uh, as always, I greatly appreciate uh, your, your advice and uh, your wisdom and taking my call. I appreciate it a bunch. I hope you have a great day, sir. Hey, thanks for calling in, David. Always good talking to you, my friend. Okay, uh, we're going to finish up here in about three minutes, and then we're going to have Rich Anderson as our guest from Anderson Capital Management uh, this morning. We've got to be talking about the grains because we have a huge grain. The last grain report today, uh, this is where they're going to do the supply-demand stuff, so there will be some wild gyrations, I would imagine, uh, to uh, see what's going on uh, uh, with some of these markets. But it will be interesting. No matter what, there will be some wild swings on both sides. Uh, it's almost like a Fed day uh, is what we have today. That's at uh, 11 o'clock. Um, I think it's uh, yeah, 12 o'clock Eastern time, I believe. 11 o'clock Central time is when it's not the last report, but it's uh, very close to the last report. This is the one uh, because we're into um, we're into October now. Uh, a lot of the crop is in, but there's still some of the crop that's still out there. So this, you're right, Mr. Z. It's not the last report, but it's the first uh, uh, preliminary report where they're really getting figures out of the thing. I've been talking to some of my farmer buddies back in Indiana, and uh, you know their their corn yields are not anywhere near where they thought they were going to be. So whether these have an effect over a longer stretch of the imagination after you go through Illinois and Iowa and other places, we'll be able to see. So we'll be able to see it. Yes, that's correct. We're just a little over 50% done here. We have this big super full moon here. This is known as the harvest moon uh, coming up here on the um, on the, on Sunday, which is, uh, you know, we have the earth is going to be at perigee uh, to the moon. In other words, it's going to be as close as it possibly can be. And uh, that is a very interesting spot. It's, can you imagine that uh, in 600 B.C. that Pythagoras actually knew what perigee was and that he could calculate when the Earth was closer to the moon? Uh, I mean, that's just uh, just blows me away. They didn't even have telescopes back in there. Ah, but they did have extraterrestrials. So I forgot about that. That's a big factor here. So we'll be seeing Rich here in just a little bit. I posted the chart of the U.S. dollar index in here where we were talking to David. And as you can see here, we had that uh, beautiful uh, rounding bottom pattern, the 135 pattern. And we've exploded out of this to the upside. That means that the euro should be heading lower. Uh, we will be coming down to some pretty good um, 
pretty good areas, and we'll see if um, if that's going to uh, if that's going to be the case. <laughs> Mr. Z asked a question about whether Pythagoras was uh, an ET. I don't know, but the story of Pythagoras is is he had a stepbrother, a brother, a brother that they found a baby in the forest. I don't know if this is true, but the baby survived uh, just on raindrops for a while. Uh, I, and I, I don't know what, whether that's true or not. I don't believe any of that stuff. But <laughs> when you listen to the stories that they tell about the man, and there was not much, of, you know, because you're going back 600 B.C. We didn't have, uh, we didn't, I don't think we had Twitter in 600 B.C., did we? Yeah, we might have. I don't remember. I probably wish I could have known him personally, but who knows? He, the only thing I remember about Pythagoras is what uh, Einstein said. He said, there was God and there was man, and in between was Pythagoras. He was sure that Pythagoras was the smartest man who ever walked the earth, along with um, Isaac Newton, Galileo, um, Aristotle, and one other dude. Oh, yes, Einstein himself. So that's it. Anyway, we'll be looking at uh, some of these other things when we get Rich Johnson on the break. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, and I believe we have Rich Anderson on the line from Anderson Capital Management. Rich, are you there? You bet. Good morning, Larry. 
Good morning. How are you? Rich, we've got this uh, big USDA report. You want to tell the folks what's uh, happening with that and when it comes out? Well, it comes out at uh, 12 o'clock Eastern time, which is uh, 11 Central. And it, I, I've always had the opinion that what matters is not what they're expecting for the report or what the report says, but how the market acts after the report. We basically have uh, some outstanding yields this year, so everybody's anticipating big numbers. But as you know, sometimes they can anticipate big numbers, and then it's less than that than their guess, and, and that causes reaction. So I trade the reaction, not trying to anticipate what the market, you know, what the uh, government's going to say about the market. How long do you wait after the report, Rich? I mean, I, I watch it, you know, also, and, you know, it'll jump around, you know, the first five minutes. It'll go 10, 10 12 cents either direction in corn and right. maybe even 30 cents in beans. Do you wait like 15 minutes or Thirty minutes. Yeah, you gotta let you gotta let something like that uh, clear because there's air pockets. You know, right after the number comes out, if there's a quick response, the market moves ten cents or fifteen cents. Well, it, it's an air pocket, and it's not like those numbers were tradable. So it's, what I'm really looking for, Larry, is do we close higher tonight or do we close lower? Mm -hmm. I've been in yep. so many markets where they're so bullish, and the report comes out, and it's a bullish report, but the market closed lower, and that was the end. And, and the yeah. opposite on bearish reports. I can certainly understand that. Can you want to explain to the folks what an air pocket is? Well, it's it's um, it, it hits a price level, and there's a bunch of stops, and a lot of these stop you know shelves or levels, you know previous lows or something are fairly obvious, and and so the in the old days the pit would look for that to swish through, and then they would just be waiting, you know several cents under the market. Nowadays, everything's electronic, so they can cancel in a nanosecond. And so there's, oh. just no, there's no resting orders to soften the, the, the drop. And so if you want to be a buyer and there's no sellers, uh, you, just kept, you have to just keep raising your bid. Right. Or if you want to be a seller, and, and that's why the exchanges have built-in uh, limits on how much away from your price a order can be filled. It's kind of a. It's kind of a. I mean, it's a technical rule, but that's just to protect, uh, you know, the the traders, uh, because otherwise uh, the report could come out and you're you've got a stop that's a penny away from the market, and, and the market's ten cents lower, and you're getting filled ten cents lower. Mm -hmm. So, Rich, uh, they we have a question. That. We had a question from one of our listeners about uh, live hogs, and I posted the. Uh, chart of live hogs over the last eight months, and we've basically been in a, a cascading bear market, and we're down near $42 a pound. Uh, isn't that the cost of production in hogs or pretty close to it? I think it's at or below the cost of production, and uh, and you're going to find that uh, foreign buyers will start to uh, step in because it's below their cost of production, let's say, in China. Mm-hmm. So if I had a choice to import pork or import meal to feed pork, mm -hmm. it's cheaper to do the pork. Now, now they want to maintain their ho hog industry, so they'll also import meal. We have good demand throughout the world. Uh, mm -hmm. But rail rates and the barge rates for the grains are, are getting cheap, so mm -hmm. um, that should help the basis for the grains also. Okay. Um, Regarding the meal and stuff and, and beans and, and far as what's happening with the U.S. dollar, with the U.S. dollar strengthening like this, uh, it makes our products more expensive, correct? That it, that it does. And an increase of a 5% increase in our currency is roughly the equivalent uh, to a quarter point rate hike from the Fed. The FOMC meeting minutes come out this afternoon also, by the way. And mm -hmm. you'll get to some insight into what they were discussing. But, yeah, the truth is uh, the more expensive our dollar is, that more expensive that makes our wheat corn beans to the rest of the world. Now, at some point, yeah, uh, that'll shift. But right now, they're anticipating the next uh, move will be a rate hike in December. And then we've got the elections going on, and that's what's strengthening the dollar. And, and frankly, well, we a lot of other places in the world are having problems, like uh, the Thai, Thailand. Yeah. Leader yeah. is sick, and the, the currency has dropped like a rock. 
I didn't know we had an election this year. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. Hey, listen, we have our good friend John, Mr. Z from Philadelphia online. John, are you there? Good morning to you both. Good morning. He's got a question for you, Rich. Fire away, John. Mr. Anderson, thanks so much for uh, fielding this question. I wanted to ask you, sir, about the hog market. Uh, you and I and everybody else all know that uh, hog, the excuse me, the futures price of hogs has fallen to multi-year lows, uh, having peaked on the PED virus supply destruction back in 2014, up over 130. Now we're down uh, close to 40, uh, 43 last. Can you share with us your thoughts on how quickly or slowly the uh, uh, the supply response will be from the industry in pairing back the number of hogs produced that might give a eventual lift to price? Most hog facilities these days are big buildings. You know, it, it, it takes a lot of time to give the, the, the permits from the county and the state as far as environmental things. So once you build a bit, building, you, you can keep it full. So there, there isn't the reduction in um, production as the response is not as quick as you might think unless they really start to lose a lot of money because they'll lose money for a long period of time because they got this building and, you know, as long as they cover the variable costs, the building's cost is a permanent thing. It, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter for the short term. So there isn't really that response. What happens is if the price gets low enough, then some of the older buildings that are less efficient get taken out of production. So there's the response time, you know, I mean, you've got the gestation period and how long it takes to, from uh, breeding a sow to having a uh, market-ready hog, you know, that's one thing. But the response from the industry is much slower because as long as they're covering the variable costs, it's taken all these years to get all these permits from the, the city, the county, the state. That building cost is already in the ground, so they'll produce at a loss for p good periods of time. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, thank you for sharing. I, uh, uh, Rich, as I listened to you uh, mention those words, I recall reading over the past 12 months the several very large brand new facilities that have been constructed in the state of Iowa. So I suspect that is exactly uh, what you're referring to. Right. And, and then uh, the other uh, variable is the, uh, the number of packers you have to uh, bid for the, for the meat, you know, for the live animals to process. And when there's more packer capacity than supply of, of uh, animals, you know, there's more competitive bidding. We don't have that situation anymore, particularly in the cattle. If anything, we have uh, less capacity, uh, kill capacity than we need for the number of animals we have. And so it's taken away the competitiveness. Thanks well, so much for your words, Rich. Appreciate it. Thanks for calling right. in, John. we got to take a break here, Rich. Stay with us and we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about the corn market. If you're looking to discover a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new Market Safe Focus Commodity CD from EverBank. This five year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to six equally weighted commodities, including gold, silver, copper, nickel, soybeans, and sugar, in one powerful CD. With annual pricing caps of 50% per component, you could earn up to a 50% upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. Take advantage of this financial resource designed to grow with the times. The October 13th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. It's 2016, and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern Time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber 
as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Rich Anderson about the crop report that we have in the grains today. Uh, Rich, uh, you know, I talked to Doug Schaefer down in Indiana because, you know, he's got several farms down there. And he's getting really wild, uh, you know, different yields on some. He gets like 200 on uh, one uh, group of uh, farms, and then on the other one he gets 140. Now, what's going on in the corn market? Well, um, the, the yields are on national average, I believe, what – way above average but what you also have is you've had a lot of spotty rains this year so one you know one area will get a an inch rain in two three miles away in fact i was talking to my guy that farms my land in south dakota yesterday he said they don't get anything and so that that's what's causing those variants of the yields but i believe and the um the universities will figure this out later but i believe that the reason that the yield has been so good this year because the diurnal range of temperature, in other words, the, we didn't get all the, a lot of hot, really hot days, you know, in the high 90s. Mm -hmm. and so the corn plant never really gets stressed like it normally does during the summer, and that's why our yields are above average. And then we got the August rains, and that made our, our soybean averages uh, pretty, pretty outstanding. On the flip side, though, we have, we have some pretty decent demand from around the world, although the dollar gets too strong, that'll nip it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's, that's uh, the, the, our yields out in South Dakota blow my mind. I mean, mm -hmm. the, our, bean, our average bean yield was nine bushels better than last year. Mm -hmm. um, something I wouldn't even believe was possible. But is, is that happening in Illinois at all? or Because, you know, that's it, Illinois. It's, ha it's happening throughout the United States to, to a fair degree. I mean, the averages the guys are looking for today our average corn yield, and this is nationwide now, of 173 bushels an acre and 51 and a half bushels an acre for beans. And earlier in the year, we thought maybe 165, which is a high number in and of itself, and 49, which is a high number in and of itself. But the August rains make the beans, and it's uh, we've got a lot of them, but big markets uh, have demand, too. They, the other part of the demand is if Barclays was talking about there's been like $54 billion coming back into commodities, you know, when the when the tide comes in, it raises all boats, and when the tide goes out, you know, they all drop. Well, money had been coming out of the commodities for years. It's now starting to come back in metals and in energies, and it, it, it's not that far behind, and it'll be coming back into the ag. Um, it, it's, it's just a... It's just a matter of time. The economic response for any producer, whether it be for hogs, for cattle, for corn, or for oil, 
you know, they have their fixed costs. And a lot of the oil wells are the drilled and uncompleted, which they call trucks. Eventually, they'll have to start opening those up just, in, just to cover the variable costs because at some point in their lease, it says that you have to produce or else you lose your lease. And you're not, you know, there's too much money into the well and too much money into the lease to lose it. So that's why the London School of Economics has talked recently in the last, actually since I think 2010, about how the way we're teaching economics is too simplistic because things don't go to levels where they clear and, and pe people turn off the lights. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that makes sense, sure. But okay, the money question coming in, that, that'll someone... make a huge difference over the long term. Okay, another question someone's asked about the Brexit thing. Are you seeing any indication of any of your customers that this is affecting uh, any of the business they're doing across the U.K.? Because I know you do with international customers with the pound down to 120. Uh, what's, your, what's your feeling on this? I, I think, uh, you know, I think, First of all, Eng England runs a, a trade deficit with Europe. So Europe, it's all posturing right now. Europe says they're going to play hardball. England says, you know, they're, they're going to negotiate for more open markets and controlling their own population. That's their two main is issues. But as long as Europe sells more to the England than England sells to them, England's got the upper hand. You know, Europe's not going to, you know, lose their best customer. And so it'll eventually it'll work itself out. You know, Wells Fargo and places like that uh, are probably looking at Frankfurt and, and other possibilities for other corporate headquarters. Uh, Frankfurt would be a likely one because uh, the, with Deutsche Bank in such dire straits, there's probably an, a vacuum mm -hmm. there, an opportunity for some international bank to come in and pick up the pieces, you know. But, no, I, 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 think, I think in the end it'll be a soft landing and you'll see very little change in business. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. One other question someone's asking, that, Dan, I don't know if you want to answer it or not, but uh, they know you're from the Minnesota area and also from South Dakota. Uh, that's the uh, the heartbed of, uh, you know, being a conservative. So what do you feel about what's going on in the election? Will that have much of an effect on any of these markets, do you think, or not? Well, yesterday the stock market was down on fears of, of what uh, could happen after the election with regard to health care and drugs and all that kind of stuff. And, and uh, I mean, look, we had a president that effectively turned off the coal industry. And the next president could effectively, uh, you know, make changes that could really mess things up. If you, if you, if you were to draw a line of executive orders in the last 20 years, it's gone almost bull market straight up versus – a number of bills that have been passed by the House and the Senate and signed by the President has been a bear market, and that line has gone almost straight down. So a lot of our government in the last eight years, and, and even before that, in the last 16 years, a lot of it's been by decree by executive order of the President. So a President makes a, a good deal of, uh, in, has a great deal of influence on mm -hmm. how things work and, and uh, that, that's the scary part. Hopefully you have uh, a, a balanced uh, Senate and House so that nothing crazy can occur. Yeah. When are the Fed minutes coming out today, uh, Rich? Generally they come out at 1 o'clock Central Time, mm -hmm. you know, in the afternoon. Okay, one o'clock central. That's a ten o'clock Tucson time, but they'll, they'll, they won't affect. They don't affect the market like the jobs report, unless it's some kind of surprise. Oh correct? no, no. The only only yeah. thing, uh, no. The only thing that uh, you'll get insight into how many of the members are thinking, hey, it's time we start to raise. My general feeling is is that not just the uh, U.S. central banks, but the central banks of the world are now finding out that these negative interest rates or near zero interest rates, as they call them have not been very effective. The quantitative easing hasn't been very effective, and we need to try something new. Mm -hmm. And and I think you're going to see that as a trend over the next two years. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go back to 1695, we have records of interest rates, uh, the London uh, bank rate. And on average, it was between 5 and 10% for most of the time. The time value premium for money has been 5 to 10%. 
and there have been brief periods of time, you know, in the 80s when it was way higher than that, and we're way lower than that right now. But over time, that's about what you'll get. And with the debt that most of these countries have, as I see it, and I'm just one person, the only way out of that for most of these countries is inflate. And, of course, that will eventually help no. metals and some of the other things sure. that we trade. For sure. Well, listen, thanks for joining us today, buddy, and uh, we'll have you on again in another couple of weeks, okay? Uh, anytime. Thanks, Larry. Hey, thanks a Very lot. Well. Rich Anderson of Anderson Capital Management. My name is Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability and host of the Trader's Ed Show heard daily here at TFNN.com. On Wednesday, October 19th at 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a special one-hour event, Trading Range Boundary Lines, where I'll teach subscribers how to identify hidden support and resistance levels, the kind that you definitely need to be aware of for your trading and investing. You'll learn how to plot major horizontal support and resistance, how to identify breakouts and breakdowns, and how to project the next price move. These support and resistance levels work for stocks, ETFs, futures contracts, Currencies and these patterns work on every time frame. By signing up for Mastering Probability right now, you get the first month of my newsletter service for only $49, and that includes October 19th's Trading Range Boundary Webinar. Plus, if you sign up now, I'll include access to my three one hour workshops, the ultimate trading signals, the ultimate reversal signals, and the long short line that every trader needs to know. This is an investment you won't regret. For all the details of the upcoming workshop and reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com now. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, I posted the chart of uh, Samsung Electronics in here. You know, they had some problems with their batteries, as we all know. Uh, as you can see here, I don't do stocks very often, especially Korean stocks, but you'll notice that it did make a beautiful butterfly pattern, just absolutely a perfect one right at the high. So uh, if you were trading patterns, you certainly would have been out of your longs uh, and possibly even short, but that's nothing, uh, that's nothing new. Let's take a look at the next chart that I posted, which is the uh, half-hour chart for gold. Uh, as you remember, um, when we talked about the beginning of the week, that we thought that this is the one that had a really good chance of making a bottom for a whole lot of different reasons. We've just made a 61% pullback. 
uh, in gold right at the lows today at um, the 12.52 level. We're now five dollars above it. If you bought that level like Mr. Z did in the in the uh, trading room today for TFNN, you know, put your stop just a few dollars below that because uh, you know we could be wrong and it could go you know a whole lot lower but right now it's setting up uh, for a very very low risk uh, opportunity here if you'll take a look at silver which is the next one that we posted you'll also see that it also made a 61% uh, retracement and it's rallied about uh, oh about tw almost 20 cents uh, not 20 cents about 15 cents uh, off the bottom so here again uh, I would keep your stops just below those levels. Uh, that would be around 1730 in the uh, silver if you're trading silver. And if you're in gold, uh, the, that level would be at uh, uh, 1252. Uh, regarding the S&P uh, this morning so far, uh, what we've done is made a 78% retracement of the overnight rally that we had, which was which was substantial. We rallied from uh, you know the 21.22 level all the way up to 21.37, 15 handles, and then we pulled back right to a 78% retracement at 21.27. Now, if this is a rally day, we're going to make an ABCD move up to around 21.47. However, folks, this is one of the the slowest trading days of the year because it is the high holy day of the Jewish faith, Yom Kippur. And uh, so keep that in mind. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.